Hello and welcome everyone to another fun Fresco Power Hour um, here on Adobe Live. My name is Karina Lindmeier. I'm here today with Rachel Presky. Rachel, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good too. I'm so excited. Um, and I saw that it's full house in the chat right now here on be.net slash Adobe Live. Um, <laughs> If you're watching us from YouTube, that's, you know, very old school because <laughs> the conversation is going on here on uh, Behance. So hop over and ask all the questions, um, watch us live, talk and find your community within the chat. Rachel, what are we going to do today? Well, we are, uh, we, this is another one in our portfolio projects that Karina and I have been like, I really want to do this. So <laughs> next up is the biggest one of all, which is designing like a large scale mural. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah, the really fun one. So we both were looking into like mock-ups and because the whole thing with our portfolio stuff is we've been saying like, if you mock it up, then the art directors know that you can do create a design for the space or a design for a scarf which is what we did last time so this time we found some really cool mock-ups that are done by home sweet home um i'll show you what it is hopefully we can try and do it in fresco afterwards as well um so we are going to be designing i think you're doing the same one as me as well we're going to be designing the um an illustration for the wall and because yeah. every time i do these I never finish on time. I've gone as basic <laughs> as possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a really basic sketch that I did last night on the train. Um, and yeah. So how about <laughs> you? I'm so excited for doing this with you today because it's like um, everyone's or every illustrator's dream to uh, do a big scale mural one day, right? Isn't it? Yeah, and <laughs> I just say a quick hi to the chat. Um, Anya is here again. Hi, Anya. Great to see you again. Um, Kirsty, Stuart, um, Stefan, Linda. And yeah, hi to everyone. It's so excited that you join us today. And please feel free to shoot any questions you have about Fresco, about um, how to set up a nice portfolio or how to create a big scale mural. Yeah. So we are always happy to help. And Rachel, I saw on your Instagram that you did a very nice mural project um, recently. For yeah. what was it? The fruit, the fruit Tell us more about it. Yeah, we. That was. I mean, every. I think every surface. I've so far. I've done murals on my wall here. <laughs> I've done windows and I've done now shutters, which were the hardest ones of all. So. I didn't really oh, okay. it's imagine. a big learning curve that one you've done yeah. corrugated stuff as well haven't you like yeah it's a lot more challenging than you think it's gonna be <laughs> it really is so way more time consuming and I have steered clear of ever doing that again but I probably hopefully will but still <laughs> at the moment <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near them <laughs> How did you um, start doing it? Like, did you start with a sketch in Fresco and then... Yeah, so that was... Also did do some kind of mock-up to show the client what you yeah, I did. Exactly. Um, planned? Mm -hmm. did indeed. So I've shared it on my Behance. Actually, I didn't put it up on my screen, but it was a project with a gallery, local gallery, to create, like bring more people into the local market. So there were seven mm -hmm. different artists and we all did different shutters. Um, and we didn't realize till we got there just how long 
painting tiny little lines on 10 meter long shutters were, but it's, I thankfully chose quite, I, the, the, my original design was <clears throat> lots of people, like I love drawing, um, but I'm quite thankful that I ended up just doing fruit and veg <laughs> at the end, because <laughs> otherwise it would have taken me months. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, yeah. and I think we were talking about it before this, um, cool that it like each surface comes with different challenges and you have to think about it all differently exactly so like for this if we're doing a massive big scale mural on a wall outside you're gonna have to like how are you gonna get it up onto the wall how it like there's yeah. so many things yeah um, <laughs> sorry um, is, i don't know if you can see my dog is trying to steal food off the baby's high <laughs> It's so fun with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> oh, she's super cute. But in the meantime, um, yeah. I opened up your Behance page on my iPad so we can have oh, a quick look yeah. and oh, see your wonderful project. Oh, thank you. She said, for the market project, you're restricted by the kind of paint you're allowed to use. So, yeah, because of the... Um, is metal you need it to be long term yeah i think she's at it she's not into bananas so it's fine um <laughs> the we can only use metal paint to go on the shutters and it had to be longer long lasting um yeah so that metal paint is really thick so i think that was part of the problem with like keeping it going forever <laughs> made the project really long um, but the we figured out part way through that if you use some white spirit with the paint, then it like made it go a bit quicker. But then obviously it made it thinner, so you might have to do another coat. So it's like this weird juggling act. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun. You know, long lots of learning um, in the long, in the end. I think at the bottom you'll see like a, my original design, just lots of people. Thank you. Keep just checking. one moment uh, this was the mock-up right yeah no. that was the mock-up yeah so it meant that the market trader could be like oh perfect but because i worked with yeah. him he the guy who owned the shutters at the stand to be like so this one he said oh, i don't like it <laughs> like, okay <laughs> i'll start a new one yeah um so but it meant that he could see it in position especially people that aren't party mm -hmm. but yeah. yes and all i, I mean, did was just lower the opacity <laughs> like drop the, the image over and lower the opacity and it kind of worked yeah. a bit so handy yeah it's super easy to give the client some kind of feeling how it would yeah. look like on their um wall yeah. container building whatever yeah so, and i think um, it reduces the risk doesn't it as well so yeah we were talking about exactly that so the often, it. and often it really gives you also um, a sense or some kind of feeling um if you've done the propositions right or if you want to include anything else or add something so it's a very nice way to get a first um, glimpse of how the project will turn out yeah exactly <clears throat> oh so sandrine's saying oh the client's always requesting mock-ups for that kind of project or something that you put good anyway it's helped sell it yeah so i'd yeah. say more as a help to sell it um the ones i've done for vans i haven't mocked up because i think the people that you work with are creative so they can kind of see it quite well um you mean in this one on the glass yeah so that one i kind of i did draw ish <laughs> and actually had I have mocked it up myself I would have realized how big that was but <laughs> <laughs> three and a half meters high is quite high <laughs> yeah. this is really huge I mean how did you um transfer the sketch to the class or the window um, so for this uh, one I printed it out um and then stuck it on the outside and then drew on the inside um but for the shutters, it was very last minute, so I had to freehand it, which is why it's a little bit different. It's quite stressful. <laughs> but I was trying to find a like 
not really expensive projector that yeah projected something up onto a wall like the digital sketch onto the shutters but it was daylight so you had to have something that was really strong and also I didn't have a lot of distance to pull the yeah it was I just came up and was like at least it's just fruit I can do that <laughs> yeah it turned out super amazing and looks wonderful yeah thanks have you got yours up there um, I uh, didn't upload it on uh, Behance because I recently did a container for uh, Fritz Cola. Yeah. I mean, in my case, it was a very fun and easy one to do because it was just black and white. Uh, you can see it on my Instagram profile. But um, it was kind of tricky because I also had to work with specific paint because okay. of the metal. And um, what I found very helpful is to clean everything first. Like you really have to yeah. clean the surface and really try to um, avoid any dust or um, wet things because yeah. otherwise the paint will come off again. Yeah. And yeah. So and I also transferred the sketch uh, freehand to the actual container and it was very nice because it turned out um, to be yeah more playful in the end and yeah. I really liked it. I think, yeah I agree I think when you I've, I've only just realized this moving so I've been doing some canvases recently and if I sketch it out on my iPad what I used to do would be pull it over to um, like trace it um, but if you actually freehand over the top or not just sketch over the top freehand it still keeps some of the fun so yeah. I've been trying to do that a lot recently and I think it's um, in the end when you try to add some final touches and you really want to um, give it your specific special touch I think that's the most fun part yeah to yeah, see what you've got. Include, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then work with it there rather than. And I mean, of course, I worked with some kind of um, rough grid. Yeah. From my sketch to the actual container. I think you did something as well. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So because like I think so because very I rough eye measurements. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But because I'd mocked it up on the thing, I yeah. could see whereabouts yeah. um, I could. So I think I did it based on the bit above. So where it says like the online green grow. So I was lining it up yeah. in my head with the text. And then that's where I was sketching it out. But Sandrine said, would you use a grid method? I know a couple of people did when we did the, um, the other artists, but you can also use a squiggle method that looks really cool. Where yeah. you draw like any kind of squiggles on a piece and then you mock it up again, um, overlay the image and then you can like reference it. It's a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also very helpful to um, find your own method to bring the sketch on the actual thing yeah. because also clients expect you to recreate what they already saw no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what they approved. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I think... Um, I can't, I was just about to say something, I've lost my train of thought, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, oh, and for our project today, we created um, a mood board together on Behance. So if you are interested and keen to see what we collected for you, um, we created some mural design inspo for this Adobe Life. And we found so many different and super beautiful artworks I mean, for example, this one, you can really um, make everything so much more fun with just some simple shapes and color and paint. Yeah, and that one feels a bit like a landscape, but it's not, and it's got, yeah. it has a character in it, and it's just so like simple, but beautiful. I really like it. And Ah, this is one of my favorites because it's so bright and so colorful and also very simple. So you can see uh, it turns out to be 
a very inviting and fun place now. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's something when you're designing a mural, coming up with an idea, like if you'd have to imagine that people are going to see it from really far away. So if you have too much detail, they're not going to see it. Yeah. And it's a bit of a waste of time. So what she's done really successfully is this like big, bold shapes. And um, I think that works really yeah. well on the mural. Yeah, it's very eye catching. And I love, I, I think you shared that with me and then I got really in depth into her work <laughs> and now I follow her on Instagram. <laughs> her work's yeah. amazing. So. <laughs> She's great. I mean, this one is also very beautiful, but um, mm. more detailed. So yeah. just to give uh, the community a quick overview on uh, what, what you can do and what mm. um, you can implement within your work and also transfer to a mural. Yeah. So this one is very detailed, but super beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. So if you want to, or if you are looking for inspiration, we created this new mood board um, and you can find it on our Behance page. Cool. Because today we are doing a mural uh, live in Fresco. Yes. Should we start? Yeah. I mean, we've talked for 15 minutes on the press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think I'm going to, yeah, just dive in. Oh, and we kind of gave ourselves a mini brief with this, didn't we? Which was that we wanted to liven yeah. up and brighten up the city. So like our, a local city or, I mean, the, the images are more American than maybe, you know, like I live near Milton Keynes, that's where I did the shutters. So. <laughs> It's not that exciting, <laughs> although there's a lot of brutalist architecture, so it could brighten it up quite a bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's more like we were focusing on creating something fun, so that's what I've gone with what I've done. And it's simple, and I'm going to finish it today in 45 minutes. Yes. <laughs> Let's start. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I also thought about creating something fun and um, uplifting and I felt kind of uninspired lately. So I thought about um, creating some creative tools for everyone because <laughs> that's something we all need from time to time, don't we? Cool. And I think it's very easy to just um, implement a picture or um, yeah, a layer with your mock-up. Um, I mean, in my case, working on the container, I took a picture of the container and then yeah. I worked directly uh, on the container in Fresco. And this was very easy. Yeah, that's... Um... That's a really cool way of doing it. So it's just, you just drew, sketched out from yeah. It's a good idea. And it's also very helpful to lock the layer because otherwise you end up drawing on, <laughs> oh, God, <yeah. laughs> on the wrong layer. That would be my downfall, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I also, when I've been away this, I was away on holiday last week and I've been using Posca pens a lot. Um, I love them. Yeah, I love them too much. But I started like coloring. So actually coloring everything in. And I think I really love the way that that works. But that's going to take me more time. <laughs> this is my problem. I've just added time to this. Yeah, but Pasca markers are really great. They are beautiful. They work quite mm. well for murals too, actually. Yeah, they really do. I also love the ones from... Um, Molotov, I think it's the brand. They also have spray cans. Oh, cool. And they have permanent uh, markers and non-permanent ones. And they are very nice and easy to use. And you can also refill them. So oh, that's you can, better. yeah, Is there so not you can buy the paint or you can also um, exchange the tips. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it's very nice. Because the, um, I think you'd end up getting through quite a lot plastic if you were using the Posca pens or whatever. Yeah. I don't think they make them reasonable. I'm not going to colour this in because it'll take too long. <laughs> I 
I think as well, when I was doing that big mural, because we didn't have it, I think the time scale was part of the problem for us. So we had only times because of when the market was shut, which was in the evenings and Monday and Wednesday. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, it meant that, well, I have a baby, so <laughs> it wasn't the easiest to get away in the evening. <laughs> um, and then when... I'm getting distracted by working. <laughs> Which boring. Okay. They, oh, I've lost my train of thought. She, oh yeah, we only had a week then to implement it. So I think it was like mm -hmm. a started Sunday evening and then we had Monday and then obviously the evenings, Wednesday and then another Monday and that was it. So I had three big days. Oh, wow. And then some evenings. So thankfully it's the summer and <laughs> it didn't get dark too early. So it was kind of stressful. Yeah, it was a bit. And I mean, what I um, didn't expect was that when you're doing a mural, you're so dependent on the weather. Like, yeah. <laughs> you cannot paint when it's raining cats. And oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was so lucky that I was kind of undercover, but. There was a part of my mural that wasn't and that was a pain because every time I went to go over to it, it was started raining and I was like, no. <laughs> so I had to like, <laughs> make sure I was planning it properly to go over to that bit when it wasn't raining and then make sure it dried enough as well before. Oh, it's just a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, it really is. It's... <laughs> I didn't expect that to be so... Um complicated no. because in my case it was so hot and super oh, sunny yeah. I mean it was perfect for um the paint because it dried very quick yeah but oh, it was a nightmare I <laughs> had to um buy a hat because <laughs> I felt so burnt yeah oh no <laughs> yeah but it was a nice experience yeah I think I did you work with someone didn't what someone helped you yeah I asked someone um, for help um, especially with filling all the um, shapes yeah yeah and that's very useful <laughs> that is super useful I mean <laughs> and it's also very nice to have someone um, yeah to chat to to talk to and also for a second opinion, it's very nice. Yeah. I think that's what I found working. I think I was very lucky that that the latest one was with a you know, there were eight, so yeah, six other artists working on oh, wow. similar things. So it was part of a project of an yeah. artist project. So it was really lovely to be. Nice. So I was next my my stool was next door to a girl that <clears throat> I live in the same town as, and I went to a workshop that she did. She's a sign writer, and her work's amazing. Oh, cool. And I'm like obsessed with it. So it was really cool just to work next to her. And she was very helpful Perfect. with this as well, because she knew a lot about the um, paints, because that's kind of what she uses most of the time. So it was so handy and lovely Perfect. to work next to someone who knew what they were doing, because <laughs> I didn't have a clue. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious I if someone in the chat has experience with painting a mural um, we're also keen to uh, hear your experiences mm -hmm. tell us like, everything <laughs> yeah please I was just thinking like the way I got my first job as well I think is because I painted this mural in my home and then yeah. the lady that um, commissions the band stuff follows me on Instagram. So she saw it. So she knew I could do it. And she's the art director. So it's quite like a, I think this is another thing about personal projects. Like this is how you can push your work to the next level is if you have a wall in your house, why not paint? <laughs> Create a mural, <laughs> share it on Instagram and we might get a job. I think yeah. that's like, yeah. And I've realized recently, like I love seeing my work in the space. And I think that's how it 
reacts best or feels most impactful. Um, and it's, I'm starting to feel more like an artist <laughs> than an illustrator. And, <laughs> and I think it's the best way to show um, what you're also capable of, like what yeah. you can do and also to um, grow as an artist, to try something new. Exactly. And it gives you a new perspective also um, work-wise. Um... Oh, yeah, Anya okay. stays in the chat. Um, she recently painted a four by three meters yeah. mural That's indoor. Me. Yeah. Wow, impressive. <laughs> The four meters is where I start to plan it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> is that three meters high? Because that's scary too. Got to get up yeah. that high. You have to bring a leather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was really lucky. I think the, because obviously I massively misunderstood how big the fans one was going to be. They had a massive ladder. And I was very lucky because I was really unprepared for <laughs> it. Uh, I was it was the same in my case it was yes. so funny because I had to laugh so hard I was like <laughs> okay hmm. what do I do I used to be um, over prepared I would say yeah. but in this case I totally forgot to um, think about the measurements and how to get there and <laughs> yeah I think there's like every single one I've done is a big learning curve yeah exactly <laughs> learning curve but it's great yeah, it was it's, it's the most fun yeah when you're learning isn't it ah oh, so Stuart said do you look for any objects and colors on the site to help create something that fits in as well I'd say you could different definitely do I guess it depends on the project so for the first band one I did it was to go along with a campaign and they had a, like an earthy color scheme so I had to stick to that. Um, but the other ones I've done have been more of like a, here, get on with it. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> um, which has been <laughs> the best thing. They're great for like, do whatever you want. Um, so then I kind of just use the colors that I like using. <laughs> I think you could. I think if you had a, you know, the, the van stuff that I did did fit with their brand. So that was kind of why I did the things that I did. Does that make sense? Probably. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> oh, Anu says it was the other way around, three and a half meters wide and four meters high. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yep. So she said it was, they had a huge ladder I was really scared at the beginning, yeah, same here, <laughs> but it got better during the painting. And Sarah said, do you prefer fresco or illustrator? It depends what you're doing. I prefer fresco, to be honest. <laughs> of course, me too. Because you can do um, vectors in fresco yep. if you want to. And I think if I was going to do a vector project, a project that needed vectors, I'd be in fresco first. <laughs> yep. Maybe refine it and illustrate it. But it's illustrated for the iPad too. Yep. But I um, hardly use it. It's really. Yeah. I did use it for more of like a graphic designing project. Exactly. And it's fine. But. Most of the time I use Fresco also for vector layers yes. because it's so easy. It is. It's very intuitive, isn't it? You know, you just pen yep. to paper, done. I think that's how probably we think as illustrators as well. Stuart says he hasn't seen the van shop front yet, but it's all gone. They took it down. Oh no. I know, that's sad. He was only there for about three weeks. So. so, I'm 
thinking about creating the creative juice coming out of a jungle. <laughs> like jungle. Yeah, nice. there's some very bright and nice colors. How virtual. Let's see. <laughs> I've been really enjoying drawing flowers. I know that's probably the, it's very boring, but I am just it's not. Yes. <laughs> I just love flowers. <laughs> flowers are great. Also leaves and plants in general are nice. Yeah. I think it's something I've, I've started doing a bit more. I think I was saying this to someone when I was painting the big mural that I had a day off, so say a day off. My daughter was in the child minders, so I was like, and I didn't have any other work to do, so I was like, what do I do? And I just sat there drawing flowers, and it's just like, for me, sometimes it's really therapeutic, and I get in, ah, and they all fit together nicely. Oh, just <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has got anything that, say, they draw when they don't think, because I love drawing, obviously, love my job, yeah, and Anya's saying it's always like meditating, drawing flowers, drawing. As I don't know if anyone else has got anything that they'll draw. It's just uh, for meditating or just to make you feel them. I always um, start drawing food. Food. <laughs> this is kind of giving me the ultimate chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, food it's like safe. fruits or simple things. Yeah. Or flowers. Mm. Or food and flowers. <laughs> That's the best combination. Yeah. It's like my go-to. I did, like, I made these series of prints, but I've never actually shared them with anyone. Should probably do <laughs> <laughs> uh, What kind of prints? Just flowers, different flowers. I have, I, I made them for my um, bedroom, but mm -hmm. they're just really calming prints and I've just never shared them on Instagram or anything. So do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should do it. I gave up on a shop. I don't have my yeah. <laughs> I don't, do you have a shop? No, I'm always thinking about it, but... Yeah. I, think I, over, over I have no time. Too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm having time to do it. And I really want um, the prints to be a nice quality. Yeah. And I think it's very, very hard to find some um, printing company or a shop that you can really trust within the yeah. quality and the colors mm. and all the specifications you want to have so I think I find I don't, I don't know it might just be my ineptitude probably is I find going from CMYK or like RGB which is what we use most of the time mm -hmm. transferring stuff over to CMYK to get it printed can't do it <laughs> I say I can't do it I think I just refuse to do it refuse to figure it out and sometimes it's very disappointing as well. Yeah, it's true. I'll get there. Oh, yeah. I bet there's a Adobe product that fits there. Hmm, so... Sensei. I don't know if anyone else does any drawing for meditation reasons. I would uh, suggest that you get into it. <laughs> it's the best thing. Yeah, it really is. I think it helps that um, when you do it as a job, 
sometimes bring back the enjoyment for Yep, it really is. And I think it's also very important to keep some kind of sketchbook routine. Yeah, I find sketchbooking really hard. Yep, same with me. It, it, it is really hard, but I think it really helps to um, stay on track. Yeah, sure. Also, Sarah says she needs to start drawing more. And Stuart says he draws most evenings, but most portraits. That's cool. Oh, portraits, super cool. Hmm. hmm. So now I think I will do some very rough hand littering. I don't know if I've done too many flowers. Oh dear. <laughs> you never have too many, right? Ah, it looks very nice. It's they're gonna have faces too. Smiley faces. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to add smiley faces to the um, fruit that from the market. Shutters, but I was like, I don't think that will go down very well. He didn't like the people <laughs> my work, so I was like, yeah, I'm not sure he likes smiley fruit. <laughs> Do you ever just keep going? No, this is not. This isn't enough. I need another flower. <laughs> I really like your um, colors. I think again, the blue is amazing. Wow, I love that blue the most. It's very nice. Yeah. I was in Greece last week, so it's very Greek color, <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> Inspired. It would make me very happy. <laughs> Yeah, but the Greek blue is very beautiful. Yeah. It's just the best. We go to Greece a lot. Well, we always did when I was a kid. And, you know, you don't sometimes don't recognize it or don't see stuff. As it could be. Does that make sense? Like, you don't see stuff when you see it all the time. And obviously, yeah. a different perspective as you get older. It's quite nice to be like, oh, I like this place. <laughs> no? Yeah, it's very nice to get a new um, color mm. impression out of a holiday or yeah. Um, yeah, some simple flowers or observing things. It's a very nice way to. Um, try something new and find some fresh inspiration. Just drawing smiley faces on all. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best bit. Do you need oh, I We see people do really cute stuff and I was like, I need to do these. Some fun. Oh dear. Hmm. Maybe I'll put this one. In some white star. So Sun Moon says, uh, so she was she's done some um, like meditative drawing before. It's really funny that a mural conversation has got into <laughs> talking about meditative drawing. Um, she's done stippling drawings and that takes your mind away from stuff. Doesn't have in your hand becomes sore then. Hmm. Yeah, 
And Stuart said, I often wonder how they paint those massive murals on the side of buildings. I think lots of cranes. <laughs> Yeah. Something I'd like to do, I think. That's what we're doing. Mm. Um, do you also then um, take a look at your mock-up from time to time within your drawing process? Or do you just um I haven't done, but I think I would do normally make sure it all fits nice. Yeah, because I think it's a great way to also make sure that everything fits. Yeah, for sure. They do some typography too. I mean typography. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get this and stuff. Probably. Spent ages trying to like learn how to draw letters and stuff properly, but I'd always come back to this like really basic. Um, I don't know, really blocky thing. I feel like I've done this since I was a kid, like drawing um, letters in this way. Mm -hmm. I think it's also nice to um have your own own handwriting yeah and i think it gives your work a style if you're just using yeah like the same kind of text every time that's true please i just tried to do like lauren palm who is she does these awesome mock-ups because she does loads of murals yeah, and she really does a lot of this big scale things. Yeah. And I'm always wondering first how she um, started. Yeah. I mean, it's really impressive how she got there and um, all the beautiful work she created in the last couple of years. And I think she, from time to time, she um, is giving away free... Yeah, Mineral classes. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think it's also a nice way. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? She does like a paid version, obviously. And I think if you, I think there are options to pay less if you don't have as much money or you can't afford to pay for the course, which is great as well. Yeah, um, and I think um, if you want to get into mural painting, I think the easiest way is just to start and to go out and ask someone if you can paint on their wall, like in your favorite cafe or um, bookstore or whatever, and show them your um, beautiful mock-up and yeah. then just do it. <laughs> I'm wondering how well that would go down in this country. I think it probably would. I think... Yeah. It will work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it will. Because people are always happy. I mean, of course, maybe you have to work for free, but if you just want to create something and practice a bit, why not? Yep, it's true. I think opportunities will come from that as well. Yeah. So... Although I don't interest people to work for free. <laughs> I mean, it's not um, it's not good to work for free. But I think if you want to just practice a bit and keep it very simple, yeah. and I think I don't know if um, what it is like um, within the UK, but in Austria there are some free walls, like public walls, where you can okay. paint. Cool. I don't know. And Maybe. I think that's a good way to also um, meet people within the community yeah. and to practice a bit. I guess more of like a street art thing. Yeah. Cool. So. 
think I saw someone I know did one of those in Barcelona. She just went and painted. I think she did some flowers actually. But they look really mm. cool. Nice. And it gave her a start. Stuart says, did you both know that you wanted to draw for a living from a young age? I didn't. <laughs> I have this ridiculous story. I don't know if anyone's heard it before, probably. <laughs> Where I wanted to be a doctor. I always drew. So I, I have always done this kind of thing. I did art at A-level. Um, but I wanted to be a doctor. So I did all the sciences. Um, and then didn't get into medicine. So went to university to do biomedical sciences. And then I, was, I did try to get into medicine again, but I didn't. Lots of pain. And <laughs> I, I, while I was at uni to do biomedical sciences, I was I wanted to go skiing and then I wanted to be a professional skier. It's just nuts. <laughs> I love the story so much. <laughs> so I did that for three years. I just got to go and live in Austria and in uh, France. It's cool. Uh, I was never good. I was too scared of everything. <laughs> it's very scary. Big jumps. <laughs> yeah. I was scared of an airbag, which is meant to be safe. Um, <laughs> and then. I, I came home, got a real job as a project manager. And I made redundant after three years. And then I was like, right, I'm going to try and see if I can. I did like a part time master's while I was doing that. So I was like, I'm going to try and get into illustration. And then here I am. So that's good. How about you? So nice. Um, I wanted to be. Um, a children's book illustrator. Oh, cool. Yeah, but then I wanted to be a graphic designer as well, and then I wanted to be a teacher as well, <laughs> and so I <laughs> went to a graphic design school and okay. also studied educational sciences. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now I don't want to um, illustrate children's books. But I love illustration and I love food illustration and yeah. colorful illustration. So, yeah. What, why, did, why did you decide not to do children's books? <sighs> That's a good question. Mm. I find them really hard work. That's like kids illustration is really hard. In my opinion. Yeah, it really is. And... On the other hand, um, I think I feel so comfortable within my style that I have the feeling it might not be the right fit for this specific market. So I can totally imagine illustrating a book for children or young adults, for example, but I think not in a very traditional or classical way. Mm. It's a good like knowledge of your own work. I think it's um, also, it's not fun if you try to fit in to something or yes. something specific. So, yeah. I think it's a, it's a really like specialized skills, children's books. Yeah. You have to, um, be really clear about the message that you're um, exactly praying. Yeah, which... exactly. <laughs> I appall it is anyone who hard. Can... Yeah. And I don't really like drawing faces that much. So <laughs> and they've got to be it's all about the faces and the expressions and people are great. And I think it's also very specific and you really have to um, have a very, very clear portfolio for the children book market. And I really enjoy having the freedom to um, 
work within different um, fields of illustration and explore my style also as well a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think it's a whole different whole thing. Yeah. So people are great. I, can't be I did a make art that sells course, if anyone is interested. It was really good um, about doing children's book illustration. And it showed you what you need to do. Um, good course. You made me realize I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's very hard to um, stick on your way or your path and especially when you're curious and you want to um, explore all your options or all you're interested in How much time do we have left? Oh my God, 10 minutes. Oh, I thought I'd get this done. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what's going on? Uh, I don't know whether to block in the letters or not. Does anyone have an opinion? Or I, should block. I think on a mural it would look better if they were blocked in. Oh, but it looks very cool. I can totally picture this on a big wall. Mm -hmm. I think as well, if you have a big bold shape and it has texture within the wall, kind of, I like, I don't really, I'm like, for some reason, I think because I've been using Posca and painting a bit more often, I want the shape, the flat shapes to have more texture. But then if mm -hmm. you convert this over to a wall, I think it would. <laughs> yeah. I think with textures, it's very complicated to um, bring them on a wall. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm totally into this um, screen, uh, screen tones um, from screen printing, yeah. the brush collection from Kalti Websa. I mean, this is really one of my favorites. And I think it's not the best fit for murals because... <laughs> yeah. No. Are you putting have to in? end up doing a lot of dots. <laughs> yeah, textures on a mural would be so hard. I think like a spray texture would work because you could use a spray paint. Yeah, that's I wanted true. to try that on the shutters, but I didn't get to one. I didn't have any spray paint. <laughs> um, but I think they did. It, you could get some textures quite easily, but it, most of the time I think it would be really hard to get. Or t not hard, time consuming. Yeah, really time consuming. But I watched um, some YouTube videos where people were showing how they create some textures with brushes and also with some, um, what's the word? I think it's the thing you use for screen printing, the rake. Is it, what is it called? The, the rub. Yeah. Yeah. No, the one you. Yeah, you're applying the like a squeegee thing. But I don't know. You can also do. cut out things yeah. of it, of the rubber thingy at the end, and then um, you can also draw on walls or on wood, and it gives you a very nice texture. Yeah. So I think there are great ways to um, also add your unique style and touch even on the wall. Yes. It's just how much time you've got. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you have to practice like with yeah. everything else. You really have to do it to get a feeling for it and to... Yeah. Um, One of the other artists that was doing another... Um, Abrea, that's what it's called. Oh, Stuart, it's a squeegee. Oh, it's a squeegee, yeah. I thought it was a squeegee. That's what we call it. <laughs> Screech. Sounds so funny, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah. Mm. I think nice word. Good. Yeah, one of the so one of the girls that um, did one of the other uh, shuttered, she used spray paints and she'd never used them before, but I think she spent a long time. Oh my uh, god, really? Yeah. 
she did a lot of like testing and she has a friend that does it so she had a friend teach her how to do it properly okay um, but her shutter took her like a day and it took us about five days when we were painting so <laughs> oh wow so that's time consuming yeah it really is yeah I think the the problem with for me with spray paints is you don't get as like defined lines yeah but you can um buy different um caps oh I didn't know that yeah because I was using them for my container project as well and yeah. I bought I think three different sizes oh cool yeah I didn't know that see lands on my name yeah that's the magic of Adobe life yeah <laughs> I learn something every time I want. <laughs> yep. From you or from Tim. <laughs> or from the community. From the community, exactly. And Abrea is the roller for lino printing. There you go. So, Sandrine's saying, that's from Sandrine, by the way, that's not, I don't know. <laughs> There's another thing that we've learned. So, uh -huh. Andrine says, you used to put a needle on paint cans to make a defined line. Ooh. It's a very helpful tip. Hmm. You have to try it, really. We have four minutes. Oh, my gosh. Right. I mean, okay, I just finished my basic color sketch. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this will do. I'm going to save it. I export this. Hoping that we'll get some nice like texture from the wall. I'm gonna ditch the one that I've done. I think if you pull, so we use this mock up. If you use this in Photoshop, you can convert smart objects and it's much easier. Um, but because we can't switch over to our laptops that easily now, we just go, I'm just gonna try and chuck a photo in, kind of make it work a little bit. Um, Sure, someone's got a better way. We'll see if we use Photoshop. Ah. Uh. So, I think this would be very nice, uplifting, you know, for a city. It's just something. the basic color sketch, but oh yeah, I need to convert you. So I'm just this is me being really quick. Um, to be honest, I think this would probably work for clients if you just took a picture of a wall. Yep, pulled it in sketched out and coloured out, you know, literally just erasing the image where it would be, just to show them a rough idea of what they're going to get. Um, yeah, I think this totally works because they know that um, you have to put it on the wall. Yeah. And I mean, of course, it will turn out a bit different, but... It's a nice way. Really quick and simple. Just way of showing your work. I mean, I think I'd like to add some more detail. Oh, does Fresco have blend modes? It does. It does. So we can do. What's the best one to use? Community, do you know? Um, yeah. Multiply? Multiply. Maybe. It's dark. Oh yeah, that looks good. There you go. That's what it would look like. I'm gonna mm -hmm. line it. Okay. Can I add an adjustment? Brightness of this layer. All right, it brightens the whole thing. But that'll do. Cool. So there. It's so it cool. It actually works. I think that works better than I thought it was gonna. I think I'd like to refine the thing a bit, the 
um, illustration of it, but there you go. Actually, almost finished one. Oh, you finished. I mean, wow. <laughs> First time. <laughs> oh, great. Oh. Well, I think we need to finish now. It's one o'clock. But thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. How are you getting yours in? Quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just finished the very rough color sketch, but, uh, you know, it it's awesome. a very huge wall, so it takes time. <laughs> exactly. So it's me trying to be really basic. <laughs> and I finally yeah. got it there. But yeah. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Karina's got information about tomorrow. Yes, uh, tune in tomorrow on be.net slash Adobe Live for um, Hidden Treasures with Kalti Webster and the one and only Tony Harmer. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks so much. It was so nice to create a very um, huge portfolio project with all of you. And um, yeah, if you want to keep on chatting hop over to discord and see you soon have a nice day and thanks for watching us thanks everyone bye bye yeah.